Um, so I'm going to ask you to define two big concepts. And so I'll, I'll pose this question to the whole panel. Um, one, uh, one thing that the service is, is struggling with, as I understand, is dealing with misinformation and disinformation as it navigates um, the challenges of determining between assessing credible threats online and online rhetoric. So can you explain to the commission what misinformation and disinformation might mean and how that impacts your work in, in determining threats under Section 2C? Certainly, I can I can answer that. My colleagues can certainly uh, add any comments they like. Uh, misinformation tends to be erroneous information that is that continues to be sent online, uh, communicate online, not necessarily knowing that the information is uh, erroneous. Disinformation is purposely spreading false information. If that if that helps at all, I, I think that's for the purpose here. I think it's the best definition. Unless you want to elaborate more, but I totally agree with uh, what was said. Okay, I would like to ask about Project Hendon briefly, and maybe Ms. Tessia, you because you were kind of the lead on the, the actual intelligence side, as I understand it, the operational side. Uh, we do have evidence, that, of course, that CSIS did receive the Hendon reports that went to a number of recipients, that's correct? Yes. Now, according to OPP Superintendent Pat Morris, and I don't know if you heard his evidence some time ago, but he testified that the OPP works very closely with CSIS. Is that fair? Absolutely. In particular, I think the Provincial Anti-Terrorism Section works closely with CSIS? Yes, it does. And OPP is also embedded with INSET, the Integrated National Security Enforcement Team? Yes. And you would agree the OBP is a valuable law enforcement partner? Absolutely. And that while Hendon, the Hendon, Project Hendon and the reports were a new product, but they still provided a valuable source of information, correct? I would imagine so. I've not seen the reports directly myself. As far as Project Hendon is concerned, and you may not be aware, but it had a very broad distribution list that went to all federal law enforcement related agencies. And that works to break down silos, fair? Um, I, I don't have personal knowledge of that, so uh, it's... You would agree that useful intelligence requires a lot more than simply scrolling through Twitter, right? Yes, it's uh, much more complex than that. And Ms. Chair, you spoke about this in your evidence uh, not that long ago, that it really requires a trained analyst to review what's there in, on social media and pass it through an appropriate intelligent lens tradecraft, as you put it, before you can have a useful product. Is that fair? Yes, when uh, when it, it, it falls within our mandate to look at a specific uh, threat on social media, our, our analysts who are especially trained will take a look with that tradecraft in mind. Yes. Right, and that is in fact what OPP did with Project Hendon, correct? They took information and they passed it through their lens and then produced it out to its partner agencies. I haven't, uh, I don't recall the exact reports. So I wouldn't be able to say yes or no to that question. I'd like to shift gears now so we can just take that document down, Mr. Clark, thank you, um, and, and talk to you about the uh, services activities in, in respect of the convoy in particular. So as I understand it, um, the service was aware or had pre-existing targets and came to learn of the convoy through that activity. Is that fair? Sorry, we, 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 we became aware of the convoy. Yes, of course. Right, and so the service had pre-existing targets who might have been involved. Yes, we had pre-existing targets in the IMVE space, to be clear. Um, in 2019 and to early 2020, the OPP witnessed a significant amount of protest, dissent, some of which caused us reasonable grounds to suspect or believe that those issues would engage in criminal activity or illegal activity that would have a public safety impact. The rationale for Hendon was to deal with large-scale protest matters that impacted public safety. Um, very specifically, we do, did look at reasonable grounds to suspect and believe as a sort of precursor for our involvement. In a very practical way, at the beginning of 2020 and the end of 2019, there was activity going on that had to do under the umbrella of shut down Canada. It was activity that activists would engage in to have a negative impact on the Canadian economy and on the Canadian democratic system generally. 
And I believe in the witness summary, it was stated that it was unknown if the information in the, in the Hendon reports was actually used in reporting. Can you confirm whether that information I, was yes. used? Yes, I think uh, the witness, uh, the interview process, I think that's a, a, an accurate statement, but I think in, a, in summary of the information that was provided uh, later on, we confirmed that indeed uh, CSIS was receiving uh, end and reports. It's just that uh, Ms. Tissier and I had never heard that uh, nomenclature, uh, but it was shared with, uh, I know for a fact, uh, with, the, uh, with our regional uh, people uh, in Toronto, in our regional office in Toronto. Right. And, and important information would have been communicated by those regional people up to your level, correct? Yes. So, as I understand it, um, the service was aware or had pre-existing targets and came to learn of the convoy through that activity. Is that fair? Sorry, we, 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 we became aware of the convoy. Yes, of course. Disinformation is purposely spreading false information. It's the clock. And the point I'm trying to make here is that analyzing social media to identify risks is something that should be done by subject matter experts or those trained to do so. Is that fair? Some challenges with social media analysis in Canada. Sure, but from an intelligence perspective, you need an analyst to really give you proper intelligence. Yes. Thank you. So that had been given to you by CSIS, and do you not agree with that? Uh, I believe that it is an analysis done by an analyst, and that is the National Security and Intelligence Advisor to the Prime Minister. When I see social media posts growing in um, number and aggressiveness of language that says somebody should kill the PM or somebody should kill the DPM, I have reason to be concerned beyond what the analyst is concerned about.